Hey guys, Dan Peseda here, coming back at you with another Prop Stats video. Welcome back, how we doing? Now, last time we were here, we looked at some SAT questions because, of course, we're all high school teachers and we teach students that are eventually going to take the SAT, so we should know what's going to be on there. But today we're going to be looking at the next level. We're going to be looking at the exam that students who are trying to become actuaries take. And that, unimaginatively, is called the P exam. Is the P for probability? Of course. Who is surprised by that? So we're going to take a look in this video at a few different types of questions that students taking that probability exam will see. Starting with question one here. Question one says that we have got two urns. The first urn, they tell us, has got ten balls. Those ten balls, four of them are red and six of them are blue. But then we've got this second urn, and that second urn contains sixteen red balls and an unknown quantity of blue ones. The question here is how many blue balls are in that second urn, given that the probability of getting two balls of the same color, one from each urn, is 0 0.44. So we've got an unknown piece of information here. We're going to go ahead and say that that variable will be b. Okay, easy enough. Now, the question here really comes down to figuring out an expression for the probability of drawing two balls of the same color. We'll be able to solve an equation pretty easily if we can do that. Now, if we're getting two balls of the same color, then that means we're either getting two blue balls, of course, or two red balls, one or the other. If we can figure out a probability for both of them, those two are mutually exclusive events, we can add them together, and that should equal 0.44. And that's going to be our approach for this question. Now, let's see if we can go ahead and do that. The probability of getting a blue ball in each pick, well, the first one's pretty easy. That first one is going to be, let's see, six blue balls. So we're looking at six out of ten in the first draw. But the probability of getting a blue ball in the second pick is a little harder to express. That will be b over 16 plus b. Because if there are b blue balls, then there will be 16 plus b balls overall in that urn. Using something similar, the probability of getting two red balls is going to be 4 out of 10 from the first urn multiplied by the probability of getting a red ball in the second one, and that will be a probability of 16 over 16 plus b. And what I know is that the sum of those two numbers must be equal to 0 0.44. Now, how am I going to solve this equation out? It really helps that the left-hand side has a common denominator already, which allows me to just add the numerators together. So we're going to get 6b plus 64 over here, all over 10 times the quantity 16 plus b, and that needs to equal 0.44. And now we've taken a probability question, and now we're just looking at a basic algebra one. Let's go ahead and cross multiply here to get rid of this nasty little fraction. and make a quick revisit to Algebra 1 land, do a little distributive property. Bam, bam, bam. Get the variable on the same side, get the constants on that other side, and based on that, our value of b is 4. Interpretation, if I'm talking about blue balls, which I am here, there are 4 blue balls in that second urn. And now we have answered to this question. So what did this question really assess here? It really checked how we were on independent events, mutually exclusive events, and that's about it. Let's go ahead and try another one. Insurance. Well, the probability exam is preparing students to be an actuary, so it makes sense that there are going to be some insurance questions in here. We'll just have to deal with it. So question two here says that we've got an insurance company determining that the number of claims received in a week is a random variable with the probability of n equaling little n being 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. We also are determining, or we're told rather, that the number of claims in a given week is independent of the number of claims received in any other week. That is very important because it's going to help us make an assumption here. 
What we're being asked is for the probability that exactly seven claims will be received during a given two-week period. Now, this is a little tricky at first because we're given information about a one-week period. But here's the catch. Since we're trying to figure out the probability that, let's say, that y equals seven, with y being a two-week event, we're going to need to break it down into what we know, which is a one-week event. And I guess one way we can write this is the probability that the first week is k and the second week is 7 minus k. Okay? Because that would mean that the sum of x1 and x2 is going to equal 7. I'm going to give you a second to process that and then we'll get moving on with the question. Now, from here, we just really need to figure out the probability of getting this k and 7 minus k combination. And what's going to help here is that the two weeks are, as they told us, independent. So for each value of k, all we're going to need to do is multiply, multiply the probability of getting k claims in the first week and 7 minus k claims in the second week. And again, that's due to the independence of the two events. Now, what can k be? Well, if y is our sum, then k can run anywhere from 0 to 7, and that's going to be what we work with here. So let's go ahead and do a little scratch work on the side. The probability that any x is equal to 0, let's start here, is going to be 1 over 2 to the 0 plus 1. And that's going to be 1 half. We're going to start looking at just a few of these. Our second one would be 1 over 2 to the second. And the last one we're interested in here is, that the, prob is the probability that x is equal to 7, and that's going to turn out to be 1 over, sorry, 1 over 2 to the 8th. Now, from here we've got a lot of possibilities for cases that can add up to having seven claims, but those can really be summarized here if we use a little shorthand. We really want to know the sum of the probabilities of getting zero in the first week and seven in the second week. One in the first and two in the second. Two in the first, five in the second. A little typo here, we should have, of course, a six. 1 and 6 would give us a combination of 7, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 7 in the first week and 0 in the final week. Now, it looks like we've got a lot of work to do here because we do have 8 terms, but here's the beautiful thing about this question. When I find the probability of getting 0 claims in the first week and 7 in the second, it's actually going to turn out that that's a number that is going to be used over and over and over again here. Because to find that probability, we're going to multiply 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 to the 8th, which is going to give me 1 over 2 to the 9th. But if we select any other term here in our summation, for example, the probability of 2 in the first week and 5 in the second, well, that's going to actually turn out to be 1 over 2 to the 3rd, multiplied by 1 over 2 to the 5th, I'm sorry, 6th, which is going to be 1 over 2 to the 9th. Do we notice anything here? Well, those two are exactly the same. And using our knowledge of exponents, we can understand that all of those terms are going to be exactly the same. So, with that in mind, that's going to allow us to do a little shorthand here and do a little problem solving that's going to get this question solved a little more quickly. In our summation over here, we had a grand total of eight terms. Okay, so I'm going to take this entire thing, and that was eight terms being added up, and each of them is one over two to the ninth. That means we've got two to the third, or eight, over two to the ninth, which reduces to 1 over 2 to the 6th, which, as math teachers, we all know, that is equal to 1 over 64. And that is the probability that we have exactly 7 claims 
in that two week period. Now, look, if you hadn't noticed that going forward and you had calculated all eight of those terms, you would get the same answer. But chances are somewhere along the way you would have noticed that all of these were exactly the same. And this is a pretty handy shortcut in that instance. Okay, finally, we've got one more example that we're going to look at. And that last example is involving my favorite probability, di probability distribution, and that is Poisson. It's got a French name, it's easy, it's got an E in there, what's not to love? So our question here is that we've got an actuary who has discovered that policies are three times as likely to file two claims as to file four claims. If the number of claims files, filed has a Poisson distribution, very important here, we need to calculate the variance of the number of claims filed. Now, if we know the Poisson distribution, we immediately realize that this is going to be a really great question. And that is because in the Poisson distribution, the variation is equal to lambda, lambda being the parameter of the Poisson. So if we can figure out lambda, then we know the answer to this question. So let's see what we've got here. We know that policyholders are three times as likely to file two claims as four claims. And what that means, algebraically speaking, is that the probability that k is equal to 2 is three times the probability that k is equal to 4. So we'll begin there. Now, I don't actually know lambda here, but I do know the general probability density function for the Poisson, and that is the probability that x is equal to k is equal to e to the negative lambda, lambda to the k, over k factorial. And that is what I'm going to use here to solve this problem. I'm going to go ahead and substitute the 2 and the 4 into that formula. noting that, of course, 2 factorial is 2. And over on the right-hand side, we've got e to the negative lambda, lambda to the fourth, and 4 factorial, of course, is equal to 24. Now, if we can solve this equation for lambda, we'll have figured out the variance as well. Now, if I'm looking here, I am going to go ahead and cross-multiply, but first, I do notice that our e to the negative lambdas will cancel out. They are not going to play a role here because we've got one on each side. Looking at the simplified version of this then, I've got lambda squared over 2 over on the left. I have got lambda to the fourth over 8. Again, I did a little simplifying action there. And from here, very easy to cross multiply. From this stage, I can go ahead and I think I'm going to divide both sides by 2 lambda squared. And what do you know? We get a nice easy equation. Turns out that lambda is equal to 2, which means I have found the missing parameter for my Poisson distribution. But more importantly, I have now answered the question. Because as we said before, in a Poisson distribution, the lambda is the variance as well. Therefore, our answer to this question would be D2. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, looking at a few questions that you might see on the P exam for actuarial hopefuls, we'll say, and look forward to more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.